But I want to return to the question of whether or not government should actively repatriate their citizens. Those who've argued in favor have made a couple of points. They have essentially stated that we as, as Canadians, as Canada, have a duty to help citizens abroad. We have a duty not to foist our problems, i.e. our terrorists radicalized in Canada, left Canada with this intent. We can't leave them to the devices of foreign courts, foreign prisons, and foreign governments. That's an unfair burden to be placed on countries where who may be strapped in terms of the number of terrorist prisoners they have to try, they have to try bring to trial. And there's the argument that Canadians and others are in fact subjected to torture when they're being held in incarceration. And when they get to trial, that some of these trials are in fact nothing short of kangaroo courts. Very rapid trials, a couple of minutes in length, and invariably the sentence that is issued by the court is death or a very long, a very long prison term. And as we in Canada do not have capital punishment, those in favor of repatriation, i.e. the government taking steps to repatriate Canadians, have argued that we have a duty to rescue Canadians from capital punishment. This is a really interesting argument. Personally, I do not believe in capital punishment, but my position is that who am I as a Canadian to tell the Iraqis or the Syrians or the Singaporeans, who, by the way, execute for, for drug use, who am I to tell them how, how to run their system? Who am I to tell them what laws to apply? Who am I to tell them what punishments are the appropriate ones for their justice system? In this case, in Iraq and Syria, participation in, in the activities of a terrorist group is punishable by death. Again, I don't agree with it, but that's what Iraqis and Syrians have decided. So the argument that we need to save Canadians from this horrific fate, I think is on very, very tenuous legal grounds and not much better moral grounds.